Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be working on the uh, first computer in our series on this uh, huge collection of stuff I got from Knoxville recently. And the computer we're going to be starting with is this Gateway 2000 P5166XL, sporting a Pentium 166, built February the 17th of 1996. And uh, by the way, before I show off more of the computer, I want to show my uh, temporary workbench for all this stuff. Normally I'd work on this stuff in the office, but one, there's too much stuff. And two, my shoulder is still healing from my surgery, so I'm not allowed to uh, lift heavy objects at the moment. So I can't move these into the office, so uh, my wife has... Uh, graciously allowed me to set up this uh, white table as a workbench to temporarily set this stuff up and tinker with until I get all healed up. Even got my trusty laptop here to uh, assist me. And keyboard, mouse, and monitor, and speakers to test all this stuff with. But anyway, on to the uh, gateway over here. We have a... Uh, I believe it's an MGA branded video card. A uh, got a CF card adapter in here. I put that in there because there was no hard drive in here when I got it. The uh, video card is kind of hidden in there. We've uh, no, you can see the video card just fine. It's the uh, network card that you can't see, and an Insonic Soundscape uh, sound card. Uh, not sure how well this will work, but we can give it a try. And the uh, only issue I've had with this computer so far is I try to install Windows 95 on it, which we'll be doing in this video. But the uh, CD-ROM that came with this computer, I believe, is this one right here. Does not work, or it just doesn't like recorded CDs. So I replaced it with this CDRW drive, and it doesn't work either. But I did test this uh, Mitsumi CD-ROM drive in it, and it worked just fine. But I'd rather save that drive for uh, this computer right here because it's a little more uh, aesthetically matching. So this will give us an opportunity to unbox this CD-ROM Blaster 52X from Creative and hook it up in here. Okay, I believe this was manufactured... Uh, in the early 2000s, it mentions all Windows versions up to uh, 2000 and ME. So still pre-XP, uh, rip CDs at 20 times maximum rate. So I think the uh, big draw for this was the uh, CD ripping uh, speed on here. There's the contents. And here's the back. Add for the Nomad Jukebox. Does this have a copyright on it? 2001, so right before XP. Okay, there's already a tear in this plastic, so I won't need that big beefy knife I just grabbed. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull this apart. This is brand new, never been used. Go. Knife is way overkill for this. Oh yes, fresh CD-ROM goodness. Okay, we've got the IDE cable and CD audio cable, um, which we will not be using since I already have those in here, but I will save this for later endeavors. Great big uh, quick start guide. Doesn't look very quick to me. And the drive itself. Brand spanking new. So we have the silica gel in there. Here it is. It's a nice looking drive. Uh, 
especially since it's brand new, manufactured April of 2001. So yeah, of course, standard IDE, is the, and it's already set to master, so all we have to do is just slide it into the computer. All right, got the drive installed, and the computer is up and running. Closer look at it there. Haven't tested it, but it did show up successfully in the BIOS, so that's definitely a good sign, so uh, first let's see if it'll eject. It does. Got a CD in there. Pray that it works. <laughs> well, that sounds healthy. So, uh, what I was doing before I realized I had too bad, uh, CD-ROM drives. I was trying to copy the Windows 95 installation files over. So let's make an attempt at that once again. There we go. That's that problem solved. And off camera I also solved a pro another minor issue. The uh, PC speaker was unplugged and I couldn't figure out which head header on the motherboard it went to, but I found it, and that seems to be working now. And of course, with it being a Gateway 2000, it has a very beefy and loud PC speaker. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, files are copied. It's a very uh, tight quarter, so forgive me if the camera gets jostled around a little, a little bit or if I wind up getting in the way. Also glad to say the floppy drive works. Let's do a control delete. And this is Windows 95D Lite that we'll be installing, which unfortunately the website that created it, Razorback.com, no longer exists, which has me concerned. If anyone knows what's going on with that, please let me know. Not the quickest to post. There we go. Alright, we know the drill. We'll move over to the Windows slash options stop slash cabs directory. Run our setup. And last night I did uh, take the liberty of installing that CF card adapter along with an 8 gig uh, CF card and replace the CMOS battery, which is thankfully just a standard CR2032. Thank you so much, Gateway. And the P560 I just showed a while ago, um, unfortunately it uses a Dallas clock chip, but the good news is that Gateway was nice enough and to socket it. So no soldering required to replace it, but I did have to order a replacement for it. And that should be here uh, around the end of the week. So hopefully then we can get that one up and running as well. Really curious about this uh, sound card in Sonic Sa Soundscape. I remember my aunt had one in her Gateway 2000 uh when she first got it, and she didn't really care for it, and wound up replacing it with a sound blaster. So we'll see if we'll be doing the same thing. It's like I remember hearing one time that the ad lib uh, support on it is not the greatest. Don't have PCMCIA or SCSI, so. We'll let it roll. Okay. Analyzing is complete. So we'll select what we want to install. Okay, apparently this is an Oak Technology Super VGA. I uh, don't know how accurate that is. But Windows 95 D-Lite is usually pretty good about finding... Uh, drivers for even the most obscure things, even better than uh, standard Windows 98, so that's really nice. 
Well, I guess we'll let it rot here for a while and let it do its thing. All right, setup is complete. Did that register? Nope. There we go. <sighs> do, I'm to stretch with my uh, good arm to do this. It takes a minute to post. Some of these computers are like this. Always an exciting screen. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. I wonder if it's froze. It's been at this uh, screen and that magnifying glass hasn't moved for quite a while. Cursor's not moving. Nothing from the keyboard. Yeah, I think it died. Alright, we froze again. Second time in a row in the same spot, so... We're either going to have to reinstall Windows or uh, maybe take one of the cards out of it and see what happens. Okay, I took the network card out and I've been getting this message every now and then during post about a bad PNP serial ID checksum. And from what I can tell, that's something to do with an IRQ conflict. And the network card's already removed, and all that's left is the video card and sound card. So I'm thinking maybe this Insonic uh, soundscape might have gone bad. I don't know, but we'll let it boot anyway and see what it does without the network card. Okay, it looks like it probably was the network card that was hanging it up. But with us getting that message during post, I don't think we're quite out of the woods yet. We still may have some issues with the sound card. This also means I gotta find a different network card to put in here. This was the card that it came with, but... Okay, it didn't make any noise there. I've got spare uh, ISA sound cards, though, if need be. I, think I even disabled the serial ports and the parallel port, and that still didn't take away that error. And it doesn't happen every time you turn it on, it just does it occasionally, like this time. And it's like garbage uh, characters that come up, too. So I won't be surprised if we don't get any sound in uh, Windows. I may be jumping to conclusions, but it looks like we may have uh, frozen again. Hmm. Because the, uh... Don't do that, Billy. The, uh... <laughs> the light on the mouse is not lit up. So we may be removing the, uh, sound card next. One moment. Okay, sound card is removed. All that's left in there now is the video card. It would be very odd if that was causing the error. 
Well, no error this time. Okay, normal. Let's see what's happier now. Okay, so far it does look happier. <laughs> Interesting, it looks like there's no uh, 256 colors on here. It's like we're running at 16 colors, so maybe it did not pick up the video card like I'd hoped. Okay, Matrox Millennium Power Desk PCI. Like it just needs to be adjusted. Tilt to restart. And I will put this sound card back in just to see if it'll work by reseeding. Right, that looks better, and that was a fast boot, too. Let's right, shut her back down. By the way, this is one of the earliest computers I've ever seen with uh, ACPI support, so that's very intriguing. Okay, let me plug the sound card back in. Who knows, maybe it just needed to be reseated. We shall find out. Uh, I'll plug the speakers in too, just in case. Just in case we do get lucky. Okay, no error this time. Of course, again, that was an intermittent issue, so it may happen again. It appears we're uh, booting successfully this time. New hardware found. Okay, was not able to find the driver though. So apparently, uh, 95D Lite does uh, not support it out of the box. So I'm probably going to have to grab a. Uh, Gateway uh, system CD and see if I can find the drivers off of it for it. Okay, got the CD made. And working on installing those sound drivers if they, uh, assuming they work. Also put the network card back in and it booted just fine, so... Yeah, I don't know what the issue was. Or if there's still an issue, I don't know. start. By the way, it did not pick up the drivers for the network car. I'm going to have to search for those online and hope the ones I found are correct. <laughs> uh, let's see if we'll get that uh, IRQ error again. Okay, good this time. Just wonder if we'll uh, get some sound at least. New! No. Complete silence. What on earth happened? Yeah, it didn't even install any drivers. I may take the lazy way of help and just put a another sound card in here. <laughs> oh no. He even gave us a uh, audio station program like a Packard Bell would. So that's a shame. Ugh. 
Uh, let me, uh, maybe I can do some more looking. Okay, I tried a different CD uh, that was slightly older. It looks like it installed some drivers and goodies here. Let's see if it would get a sound. Uh, I probably, <laughs> I probably have the speakers plugged up wrong because they weren't very clear on uh, what jack they belong in. There we go. It's the center jack. All right, let's do a canyon test. See what that sounds like. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Bad sounding. Like I said, my big concern is going to be uh, DOS gaming, if that sounds off or not, which I heard can be a possibility with this card. But I don't have any DOS games on here right now, and I won't until I get my network card going. So I will do that off camera and hope for the best. Okay, I actually managed to get the network card running without any issues, and by the way, I'm running all this through a uh, TP-Link wireless repeater because this is an apartment, all my Ethernet stuff is in the computer room, this is the living room, and I obviously can't be running uh, wires through here, so Wi-Fi repeater is what I had to use, and it seems to work just fine, so... My go-to for testing DOS games for sound, Sky Roads Christmas Special. Let's see how wrong it sounds. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of the uh, Sound Blaster PCI-128. And that's not a good thing. This sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. This card has got to go. Yeah, I can see why my aunt changed it out. That doesn't sound, uh, that doesn't sound like proper uh, ad lib. So yeah, I am going to uh I'm going to take care of that. I have this new old stock ISA sound card that I picked up at Goodwill uh, last year that I haven't even used yet, complete with original floppy disk. So we will see how that works in here. Okay, new sound card is in, got the floppy disk. Let's see if it works. Okay, for Windows 95, we do a colon slash win three one underscore ninety five slash sep hopefully the sound card will uh do the job well yeah I just can't live with uh that kind of ad lib emulation on that Insonic card, that's... We can't do that. <laughs> I 
advanced logic sound system, huh? We'll see how advanced it is. They didn't really install a driver. We can just do this. There we go. I guess I'll have to do each one manually. Okay, it does have internal OPL3 of some sort, so... That's promising. I figure this will be MPU 401. It does have a wavetable header on it, which is nice. Okay, sound is working, just a little bit on the quiet side. Maybe I can turn it up. All right, let's let's see what this ALS rack is. Oh, that's interesting. Give that a try later on. Canyon test. Classic OPL3 FM synthesis. Nothing wrong with that. Sounded good to me. So let's uh, give Sky Roads another uh, go. Wherever you are. Much better. Much, much better. That's how it's supposed to sound. game. Huh, the, uh, uh, sound effects disappear. Odd. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a bad sign. That is not a good sign. Let's see if a reboot took care of that. Oh. No, it didn't. I think we were probably... going to get the freezing ding sound again. Yeah, <laughs> why? Why must this stuff happen to me? Okay, I booted into uh, plain old uh, DOS mode. Let's tr try it in here. Uh, this is 
not promising. Not promising at all. Yeah. It ain't happy. Well, that's a uh, depressing turn of events. Okay, looks like all that's just for uh, windows. That's not good. Okay, we're still playing uh, Sound Card Roulette. I now have a ESS 1868 audio drive in here, which is a resource conflict. Uh oh. What's it conflicting with? Because it doesn't say. Weird. All right, Sky Roads. Give me some magic. Okay, sounds good. Let's see if it gets hung up on that on those sound effects again. Okay, that's good. All right, I think this one's probably gonna work, uh, especially if I can get that uh, resource conflict figured out. I don't know what that's for. So everything seems to be working. Okay, we got more trouble. Canyon shouldn't sound like hissing, and Canyon shouldn't cause explorer.exe to crash. What on earth is going on here? Why can't I get a working sound card? Okay, a reboot and uh, manually changing the uh, resource settings on the I.O. seems to have fixed it. This is using that ESSFM, whatever it's called. Yep, ESFM synthesis. Sounds just slightly different from your standard OPL3, but still close enough. I'll, I don't mind it. I think we found the a good card for the system. That other card we tried, uh, that new old stock one, not the Insonic, uh, I haven't given up hope on it yet. I will try it in another computer. Maybe it'll work better. It could be possible just didn't like this particular computer. When the hissing sound, by the way, was because I had the uh, speakers turned off and the hissing was coming from the PC speaker a while ago. So yeah, that was unusual, but it seems to be working fine now. I can't complain. So I guess we will end this video here since everything seems to be functional. See, I really like this computer. I think we'll be able to have some fun with this. Does need a cleaning on the inside, some dusting. Probably order a few uh, Geek and Spiel stickers to put on it. One thing I did forget to do is I want to look up some more info on that uh, video card. Some Matrox. 
on DX Diag or not. Uh, maybe we're not out of the woods. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if I should just use plain vanilla Windows 95 on here and not uh, D-Lite. <laughs> Maybe it's just not liking it. Okay, we got two megs of memory on here. Alright, I guess we'll go ahead and end the video here. I'll see about putting a more generic Windows 95 on here. But until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and X. You may also support me on Patreon if you'd like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.